As someone who's reviewed quite a few different Type-C monitors, the Lenovo ThinkVision P27H-20, other than being a bit of a mouthful to say, is a 1440p Type-C monitor. In this review, you're going to be seeing if it's actually worth your money. It costs around £440 in the UK and around $480 in the US. Links to Amazon will be down in the description below, where I earn affiliate revenue. Also down there, you'll find some links to some alternative monitors that I have reviewed and indeed would also suggest you to check out. Now before proceeding with this independent review, if you do appreciate it, definitely do drop a like and subscribe and hit that bell notification, it would be greatly appreciated. Now jumping straight into the image quality, let's talk about its 27 inch 1440p IPS panel. Now here the monitor has a dedicated sRGB mode and DCI-P3 modes that can be found through the OSD. I'll showcase this further down in this review in the appropriate OSD section. Now here in the sRGB mode and put to the test against the sRGB color profile, it scores a whopping 97.3% in the gamut coverage and 102.5% in gamut volume. As you'll be able to see over here, it does relatively well in sticking to the sRGB gamut volume, but is a little bit under and cut short in the blue tones. And as a result, it is pretty color accurate with an average delta of 0.9 which is very impressive, and a maximum of 3.18. Ultimately, this monitor can be used for more professional editing work, be it video grading or image editing. And if you do have a color calibrator at hand, you can even bring this figure further down to the zero ideal. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that when you do lob it in its sRGB mode, it does lock the overall peak brightness. And I should also mention here that the contrast ratio is around 1000 to one, which is okay for an IPS panel, although I was expecting just a little bit more. Now here, in terms of peak brightness, it really reaches 230 nits in sRGB mode, and if you take it outside of sRGB mode, and let's say put it in custom mode, you'll get 340 nits. In terms of its minimum brightness, it gets down to 80 nits. So it's a good range, although I would have potentially liked it to get a little bit dimmer and also a little bit brighter, specifically in the sRGB mode where the brightness is locked. And this perfectly leads me on to brightness uniformity, and while I do appreciate there is panel lottery, in my case I had a little bit of odd uniformity at the bottom right corner, but it's not overly bad. I was potentially expecting just a little bit more from a monitor that costs quite a substantial amount of money specifically for what you're getting. As for backlight bleed, given it's an IPS panel, you can notice bleed and as you can see on my panel, bottom right and a bit of the top left, you can see a bit of bleed coming through. So to summarize the image quality section, what I will say is that if you're a professional, then this might be okay, but there are some other monitors out there, namely from BenQ and Philips, which I would highly recommend, not only for their average delta E and maximum delta E coverages and also sRGB coverage of course, but also due to the fact that they also offer a Type-C connectivity and slightly bettered brightness uniformity. Now moving on we get onto gaming and I appreciate this monitor is not lobbed as a gaming monitor in the slightest. It's got no adaptive sync so there's no free sync or G-sync for you to use. It's limited to 60 Hertz where some of its competitors offer 75 Hertz but even then that's not really a gaming monitor and furthermore it's not really a gaming centric monitor. Anyway all I would like to say over here is that when I tested it in terms of counter strike which is pretty intensive as an FPS game, the monitor's response time is a little bit sluggish. Even when lobbed on the extreme overdrive mode, you do notice a slight bit of inverse ghosting, but even then, there's the response time is not exactly stellar. The same could be said about his input lag, which is a little bit lackluster and could have been just a little bit better improved. Ultimately, it is not a gaming monitor, so it's no surprise over here that the monitor doesn't really perform well in this domain, and it's just something that you should be mindful of if you're gonna be using this monitor for, let's say, casual gaming purposes, and indeed for more professional work. Now, moving on to the monitor's OST, there's some really awkwardly placed buttons found behind the monitor. Now, if you do figure out how to use the buttons in a correct manner, what you'll find is a few different options. You've got brightness, contrast, volume, and speaker. Now, a little note on the speaker, it's two one-watt speakers. They're not exactly great in terms of music listening or movie watching. If, however, it's gonna be used for basic notifications or Windows notifications, it will suffice. Now, for advanced settings, you've got dynamic contrast, the overdrive, the color mode, which here, as I mentioned before, I logged it in the sRGB mode and um, I used it against my color calibrator to see how it would perform out of the box. 
Then the scenario modes, I leave it on panel native, but if you go for digital cinema, it seems to kind of make the um, colors pop just all that little bit better. But of course, that just really depends and it's a little bit subjective as to what you want. As for the port settings, it's pretty much self-explanatory. And as you can see, you do have a daisy chain option, which you can enable, and that is via display port. So it's nice to see this does have it. And of course, you do have the Type-C port as well, which you can use for charging, and you can enable or disable the USB charge. Then you've got the menu OSD settings, and then of course you can exit the OSD altogether. Now to round off this review, we're gonna talk about the build quality and design. And here, I really do like the fact that Lenovo have integrated a four-sided borderless design. It really does look nice and does stand out from the rest of the crowd, which offer a three-side borderless design, making it ideal for those people who want to, for example, use a Visa mount and make it a multi-monitor setup. If, however, you want to rely on the stand, well, the built-in stand is very sturdy. It also provides all the degree of adjustments that you will wish. So tilt, height, pivot, and swivel, all of which are included. However, there's something I did notice, and I did find it slightly odd, that there's a slight little noise. Here's how it sounds. Indeed, that sort of sound did strike me as a little bit odd, specifically for a monitor that costs around £440 slash $480 to $490. Nevertheless, this is the case, and I can't see potentially being a massive issue for consumers, but it's something I thought to point out. Now, furthermore, there is a little hole at the front of the stand. It's got a red look to it. And I know this is in brand with the Think Vision line from Lenovo. However, I do feel that the red is quite bright and vivid. And while people might think this is just kind of a non-issue, I have seen multitude times on my monitor reviews where monitor manufacturers use a certain color scheme and specifically when it comes to red for gaming, uh, they've not really liked it. And here, given we're not talking even about a gaming monitor, and rather talking about a monitor that will sit potentially flush on terms of like a clean desk setup, I do find that the red is kind of obstructive. On the plus side, you can put your smartphone over here, and I have my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus for size, so it gives you an idea that the actual hole over here is relatively large, and allows you to have a smartphone placed with relative ease. Now, I should also mention the connectivity to this monitor, because of course it's one of its unique selling points. It has of course got a Type-C input, it's also got DisplayPort 1.2 and HDMI 1.4. There's also a DisplayPort output which allows you to daisy chain a monitor. In other words, you don't have two monitors connected up to your computer, only a singular one such as this Lenovo monitor, and have a DisplayPort running from this monitor to your secondary monitor, effectively saving you that extra connectivity to your computer's ports. Now elsewhere there is a Ethernet input, there's also a 3.5mm jack output for your headphones and as, as I did mention in terms of the OSD section it does have relatively shoddy speakers so you might want to consider this as an option and finally if you do use the Type-C input be it for display or indeed audio you can then have access to the four Type-A ports these USB ports can be found at the bottom of the monitor and at the side of the monitor as well, which makes it easy to access for, let's say, a flash drive. And so with all of that, let's get on to my verdict. Here, I feel that the Lenovo ThinkVision P27H-20 is a decent all-rounder. However, the thing to consider here is that its competitors come in at a cheaper price and effectively offer pretty much the same functionalities. In fact, a few of them, such as Philips, offer even a built-in webcam, and even though that's nothing really to go by, it's just something to have a kind of food for thought. So as a result, I would very much suggest you guys to check out the BenQ or the Philips monitors, depending on terms of your budget and what you're after, and they'll be linked in the description below, and take this Lenovo monitor as a decent alternative. That is, of course, my thoughts and opinions on the monitor. I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. And of course, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to see more from the channel, and hit that bell notification. Alright, I've been totally dubbed. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.